ni mokozi alikimbia katika kijiji Kualita watu njoni mumu wale mtu anyambia ya siri zangu zute Ya tupasa tuende ule mwengo ya tutanga zeneno na buwana mtu Yeye ndiye kimbilio le tutena mokozi wa maisha yetu Yeye ndiye kimbilio le tutena ni mokozi wa maisha yetu Alipohundua kwamba ni mokozi alikimbia katika kijiji Kualita watu njoni mumu wale mtu anyambia ya siri zangu zute Ya tupasa tuende ule mwengu ni tutanga zeneno la buwana mtu Yeye ndiye kimbili yole tutena ni mokozi wa maisha yetu Yeye ndiye kimbili yole tutena ni mokozi wa maisha yetu Yesu akajibu akisema mwana mke Ungejua nani ya kuomba imaji na we Unge mumba ya liyo hai usiume Kiutena Yesu akajibu akisema mwana mke Ungejua nani ya kuomba imaji na we Unge mumba ya liyo hai usiume Kiutena Yesu akajibu akisema mwana mke Ungejua nani ya kuomba imaji na we Unge mumba ya liyo hai usiume Kiutena Yesu akajibu akisema mwana mke Ungejua nani ya kuomba imaji na we Unge mumba ya liyo hai usiume Kiutena Yesu akajibu akisema mwana mke Ungejua nani ya kuomba imaji na we Unge mumba ya liyo hai usiume Kiutena Yesu akajibu akisema mwana mke Ungejua nani ya kuomba imaji na we Unge mumba ya liyo hai usiume Kiutena Yesu akajibu akisema mwana mke Ungejua nani ya kuomba imaji na we Unge mumba ya liyo hai usiume Ya, kefa. Hello members, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. Are you hearing me? Very yes, well. We Thank you very much. I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of us who are partic uh, participating tonight in all the channels, Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, and any other to, to tonight's presentation. And I want to thank Pastor Paul Mlendema for availing himself in good time. I, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that today's connection is clear and uh, we look forward to hearing from the man of God. I want to take this moment before we do the, the prayer to take a brief, uh, a few minutes to introduce uh, Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul Mlendema comes to us from the South Zambia Union Conference. 
uh, Lusaka Conference, and he is pastoring as, at West Good uh, District in uh, in Lusaka. We want to thank the Lord for giving him to us that is, we may be able to, to hear his word. We have already had our first presentation yesterday, and today we are having the second presentation. Uh, before we do the prayer, I want to request uh, Brother Elder uh, Tuvako to play for us the theme song. Elder Tuvako. <laughs> Let us pray. Our kind and loving Father in heaven, we come before thy presence this evening with much thanksgiving for your goodness upon each one of us. We thank you for the day that has been, and we thank you even for tonight, Lord. Thank you for the moment you have given us to listen to your word that is going to be presented to us by Pastor Paul Blendema. How we pray that, Lord, you may captivate our minds through the power of your Holy Spirit that we may be able to internalize the message that is meant for us tonight and that we may apply it to our lives. It's our request in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Kumi. Yes, 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 Brother Kefa. Good evening. Good evening to you. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I want to recognize your presence with us tonight. Thank you. And as a matter of protocol, I request you to, just like we do, we normally do, to invite our pastor, Mulendema, to speak to us, please. Thank you very, thank you very much, Elder and Brother Kefa, for this opportunity. It's another moment of time that God has given us so that we can be able to listen to man of God. Brethren, we have a privilege that God has given us. It's my prayer that we take this opportunity to first and foremost invite the spirit of God in our mind so that really we can internalize the word that he has for us this evening. It's my prayer that our pastor, our guest, Pastor Paul, he be an instrument in God's hands to reach the message that the Lord has for our members, for us, and for all our dear viewers, wherever they are listening from. Pastor Paul Mlendema, it's a pleasure to invite you once again to welcome you on our platform so that you may speak to God's people. May you feel welcomed for God's people are really waiting to listen and to hear from God through you. Welcome, Pastor. Welcome, Pastor. Thank you so much, my dear Pastor. Thank you, dear viewers. As we begin our session, our prayer this evening is that we should be in partnership with God. Pastor, we can't hear you. You have muted yourself. May you unmute so that we can be able to hear you. Thank you. 
Thank you, dear pastor. Good evening, dear viewers and uh, everyone who is on this platform. We Good thank evening. God for according us this time to share his word. Okay. Welcome once more, dear listeners and viewers, to our presentation tonight. My dear pastor, Pastor John, and Elder Willis Hombete, thank you so very much for allowing me space to be on this platform to share God's words of life and beauty here on this platform. Everyone who's listening, and watching this in different uh, places, my prayer is that may the Lord be with you as we begin. Our theme says faithfulness to royal priesthood, calling even in times of crisis. Yesterday, beloved, our lesson was on chosen for a purpose chosen for a purpose. And we were looking at the tame chosen. What does it mean to be chosen? Okay, this is a word, a Greek word that ultimately speaks of the grace of God. That each time God chooses us, it is by his grace that we are chosen. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Ekletos means one who is nominated or picked out. In scripture, chosen usually defines one who is the object of choice or of divine favor. Choosing, the choosing of some does not imply the rejection of others, but God chooses because there is an assignment, there is a purpose that he wants to do. We looked at John 15, reading verse 16, that Jesus declared, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. That is a privilege to us as human beings. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. That is our responsibility, to go and bear fruit. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Hear now the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Fearing God and keeping his commandments is going and being fruitful, which is our responsibility and duty. And that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. And so the privilege of being chosen also brings responsibility. A child of the king should bear a family likeness so that others will come to know him as uh, the king's son or daughter. Character and conduct must blend in together for, uh, for others to know whether this is a prince or a princess because they are coming from a royal family. Christ, our chief example, his whole career evolved around the central conception of service in regard to humanity. To save man to Jesus Christ, that was his mission. Luke 19, reading verse 10. For the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus Christ was mission field to seek and to save. That was his mission. 
And so he came here on planet Earth. And what was his motto? His motto was, I must work. John 9, reading verse 4. Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me. Night cometh when no man worketh. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Because Jesus knew that he is on planet Earth. And on planet Earth, there is a limit to everything. Jesus motto was to wake while there is still light. While night cometh when no man waketh, he needed to put everything in order. So his motto was to wake. That is why we are here today. Once more, dear beloved, I want to welcome you all to our mountaintop experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. At this venture, I want us to consider the subject matter tonight. And our subject is a witness, not a defender. A witness, not a defender. What the Bible says is true. Everything the Bible relays and shares with us is true. So we must take everything that is in the Bible so that we move forward. Our key text, 1 Peter 2, reading verse 9. But you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Our Father in God in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. This evening, Father, we want to submit ourselves before you, that you may take care of us. Father, before we handle your word, we want to invite God, the Holy Spirit, the writer of this word, to give us understanding and open our mental faculties that we may understand your word want to put this program into your hands that may you be with the entire system that everyone that is listening everyone that is watching may be blessed sanctify everyone on this platform this is our prayer and asking that your name alone may be exalted and not the name of the presenter this is my prayer in asking in the name of jesus amen Thank you. A witness, not a defender. A witness, not a defender. Let's begin by reading Acts 1 verse 8. Acts 1 verse 8. But you yourselves shall receive power when the Holy Spirit hath come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the ends of the earth. But you yourselves shall receive power when the Holy Spirit hath come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the ends of the earth. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let's take a look at our theme this evening. Our theme song, let's take glimpses from it. Christ in song 237, it says, stand up, stand up for Jesus. You soldiers, of the cross. Lift up his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. Till every foe 
is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. What can we depict from our theme song? Our theme song, Stand Up for Jesus. What does it mean to stand up for Christ? What does it imply to stand up for Jesus Christ? By definition, to stand up for something or someone implies to defend something or someone that is being criticized or attacked. It means to defend or support a peculiar idea or a person who is being attacked. Standing up for Jesus in this sense means being Christ-like. It means being a reproduction of Christ. Galatians 2.20, it is not I that should live because flesh has been crucified at the cross. It is no longer I. The old man is knelt to the cross. It is now Christ who is living in me. And so standing up for Jesus means being a reproduction of Christ. It means rebirth. Selected messages, page 105, paragraph three. The character of the Christian is to be a reproduction of the character of Christ. Let others see not you, but Christ living in you. That is what it means to stand up for Jesus Christ. The inspired writing of Ellen White, Our High Calling, page 18198, paragraph 6, reviews and tells us he calls upon his followers to train in his footsteps of self-denial and self-sacrifice. The character of the Christian is to be a reproduction of the character of Christ. The same love, the same grace, the same unselfish benevolence seen in his li life is to characterize the lives of his followers. We that are called to minister to others, we that have been chosen to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to be a chosen generation are to be Christ-like. We must have a character of Christ. When situations are tough, we have to stand up for the right. When we are being dogged down like pawns on a chessboard by our enemies, somebody somewhere has to stand up for his or her rights. Many times as Christians, we stand up to protect ourselves. In many nations today, children take part in martial arts as an act of self defense. Everyone wants to protect themselves from others. At the same time, adults acquire guns. This shows how people feel about the right to defend themselves. The same trend is seen in our Christianity. It is seen in the Christians of today. Everyone wants to protect himself. We want to defend ourselves. Christians seem trained from birth to defend themselves. Christians seem trained to defend their faith and what they believe in. Because of this, many people today think that God needs to, to be defended. God needs us to defend him where truth is concerned. God needs our sacrifice where tithe and offering is concerned. God needs us to speak for him, to defend his owner as if he cannot speak for himself. Mm, this is shameful indeed. As believers in Christ, we would want to defend the gospel, the doctrines of the Sabbath, the doctrines of baptism by immersion, Christian standards, we can name them, there are so many. 
We want to defend each time we meet with our fellow friends. The first position we take is a defensive position. Charles Spurgeon put these thoughts so clearly when he said, the gospel is like a caged lion. It does not need to be defended. It, it just needs to be let out of the cage. The gospel is like a caged lion. It does not need to be defended. It just needs to be let out of the cage. Jeremiah, Jeremiah appreciated the gospel, which is like a cage. We don't need to defend the gospel. What we need to do is just to let the gospel come out of the cage and go forth. Jeremiah 20, verse 9. Then I say, this is Jeremiah. I will, not, I will not make mention of him. This is Christ. Jeremiah said, enough is enough. I will not make mention of him, nor speak anymore in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. Jeremiah said, I do not want to proclaim to do anything concerning uh, the gospel of Christ. But this same gospel, the word of Jesus Christ, was in my heart as a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. Jeremiah could not shut up, but was to speak. Jeremiah could not sit down, but he got up and went forth and witnessed that Jesus is the Lord to the glory and honor of the Father. Why? Because the gospel, this word was fire burning in his bones. We need to get connected for us to do the things that Christ did. Somebody needs to get connected with Christ for us to move forward. Are you, am I being connected with Christ? Fellow Christians living in these last days, we all need to get connected for us to do great and mighty things because that power is wrapped up in one person. That power, all the power is in Christ. For us to exercise that power, we need to get connected, a witness and not a defender. Adventist man, fellow Adventist in this world, the common description of an Adventist man is sleeping giant. Adventist men are known as the sleeping giants. Others are busy working for the Lord. Women are busy doing their part in departments such as Dorcas. But where Ammo is concerned, Adventist men is concerned, we as men are sleeping. We are tamed as sleeping giants. There is need for us to change our perception. There is need for us to get connected with Christ. God does not need to be defended. He is the almighty God. He knows everything. God needs no defense. He is the great I am. He that touches the mountains and the mountains smoke. He that created the heavens and the earth and casts out demons at the sound of his name. That is God himself. He is God, the powerful God. He needs 
nor defense. It is therefore blasphemy to try and help God. No man can defend God. God is God. If God needs to be helped, he ceases to be God. What does the Bible say? The Bible reveals everything to us. We must move with this motion. If it's in the Bible, I believe it. If it disagrees with the Bible, then it's not for me. Everything in the Bible is for me. Anything that's not in the Bible is not for me, is not for you. A witness and not a defender. What does the Bible say? Here we find a scenario in 2 Samuel 6, verse 1 to 7. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel. Chosen. Elect, chosen by the grace of God. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David rose and went with all the people that were with him from Bali of Judah to bring up from hence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. There was time when the ark of God was not with the children in Judah. And so they were to bring it back. What happened at this time? Broken instructions. As we know that the ark that um, had the covenant of God, the ark was to be carried by priests and the Levites. In Deuteronomy 31 verse 9, the priests, the sons of Levi, who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord. So priests and Levites carried the ark. Those were the instructions given. First Chronicles 15, 14. And the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves in order to bring up the ark of the Lord. These were the instructions that were given by God on how to handle the ark. But these instructions were broken. What happened? What happened? Broken instructions. The ark, instead of it being carried by the Levites and the priests, it was put on the ox cart. And so the Bible continues to tell us what happened. Second Samuel 6, 6 to 7. Uzzah reached out to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen upset it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God struck him there for the error, and he died there by the ark of God. Uzzah, the ark of God is being carried on an ox cart, instead of it being carried by the Levites or, or the priests. It is now put on the ox cart, and there on the ox cart. The ark seemed to be falling, and Uzzah tried to help God that this ark should not fall. When Uzziah or Uzzah did so, he was struck there and then, and he died. A story of a man who tried to help God is found in 2 Samuel 6, verse 1 to 7. This man, Uzzah, tried to help God. He tried to defend God. And because of this, he died. Uzzah, the Levite, 
when he saw that the ark of the Lord, which was on an ox cart, was about to fall, he reached out his hand and touched the ark of God. And there and then God struck him. Believers of God, the ark of God represented the very presence of God. And so we are saying God needs a witness and not a defender. Uzzah tried to defend God away from falling. He tried to protect God that he should not fall because the ark represented the presence of God. So the ark was about to fall. That seemed God is falling. And this man tried to take hold of the ark, to take hold of the presence of God that should not hit, uh, get down. Because of this, Uzziah died. Uzziah, man that tried to help, his help resulted into his death. No man is able to protect God. No man can defend God. Remember the temptation of Jesus. He is being tempted by the devil. And the devil says, cast yourself down. For it is written, for he will order his angels to protect you in all you do. They will lift you up in their hands, so you will not slip or fall on a stone. The devil used this. Jesus, if thou art the son of God, cast yourself down. It is written. And so likewise, Uzzah tried to protect God, to protect the ark from falling. But God is bigger than Uzzah. He is able to defend himself. He is able to protect himself. When man tries to defend God, that is moving on grounds that are so dangerous. Uzzah tried it and he died. Uzzah died. Why did he die? No man can help God. Uzzah crossed his boundaries. As we stand up for Christ, as we stand up for Jesus Christ, God has called us not to be his defenders, but his witnesses. We need to know that we are witnesses. We should know our limitations. We should not cross our boundaries. God is looking for a witness. An example of a man who knew his limits, John the Baptist, John 1 verse 6 to 7. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, not a defender. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. We, as well as believers, as Seventh day Adventist men, as Seventh day Adventists, we have been sent to witness, to bear the goodness, to bear the good news that we have found in Christ, to spread it to everyone else. We are not the light ourselves, but we must bear the light. Acts 1 verse 8, but you yourself shall receive power when the Holy Spirit hath come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of this earth. But you will receive power. The disciples of Jesus waited upon these promises. They are in Jerusalem waiting for the power. What were they doing 
Wow, they were still waiting. They were busy forgiving one another. They were busy making their ways straight. And when everything was clean, when they were ready, power came and they went out to witness. We are not witnessing as Christians because we do not have the power. It calls for power for us to go out there and preach the good news to others. A witness is one who testifies or affirms something. We are called to witness the good news of God, to stand up for Jesus. This means we need power. We need the intrinsic ability to perform the extraordinarily. To stand up for Jesus, one needs to be a man. God is looking for men. God is looking for women that will stand for the right. God is looking for youths that will stand up even in these last days and stand for the right. Are you that man? Are you that woman? Are you that youth? God is looking for someone. God has called us to be his witnesses, to witness the truths that we have learned, to witness of God's love. We are to stand up for Jesus and witness to our fellow human beings, our fellow friends that are struggling with alcohol, our friends that are struggling with drugs, our friends that are struggling with sexual addictions, that are struggling with laziness when it comes to work. Why sleepest thou when work pending? God is calling you and I to stand up for the right. God is looking for me. He is looking for Adventist men. He is not looking for sleeping giants. He is looking for you. We need to get up and move. God is looking for a man. We find in the word of God, an invalid man that was by the pool of Bethsaida. For 38 years, Yes, he is there at the pool of bedside, but nothing happens to him. John 6 verse 5 tells us, And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 38 years, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me in the pool. The invalid answered, Sir, I have no man. When the waters are troubled to push me inside the waters that I must get healed. I have no man. Men are needed. A man is called for. God is looking for a man. This invalid man says, I have no man. Doesn't mean when you are putting on a trousers, you're a man. Doesn't mean you, when you have beards, you're a man. There are people that have beards, uh, uh, that put on trousers, but they and men. God is looking for men. Thank God that Jesus is the man. It takes a man to help others to stand up for Christ. It takes the man to make another know of God. It takes a man, a woman of God, a child of God to help Others see God even in the life of darkness, even at a time such as this, a time of crisis. It takes real men to point others to Christ. The book Education 
by Ellen White. Page five, seven. The greatest want of the world is the want of me. Men who in their innermost souls are true and honest. Men who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Men whose conscience is true to duty as the needle is to the poor. Men who will stand for the right even though the heavens fall. Jesus is looking for such a man. Jesus is looking for such a believer. He is looking for such a woman who will stand up for the right. And these are the days for us to stand up, for us to get up and move for the right. Jesus is looking for a witness and not a defender. We need to witness the goodness that we have found from Jesus and share it with others. Are we connected to him? And you will receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you will be my witnesses. When power is come, when intrinsic ability comes upon you, no man can sit, but every man will go out because they have been given the power to do great things. We must evangelize. Now is this time to stand up for Jesus, to witness to the world. Now is the time to do what the Lord commands. And what does the Lord command? Go and bear fruit. Our theme is, I will go. The question is, are you going? Where in uh, matters of stewardship, are you going? Are you a faithful steward? In matters of our Christian standards, are we going out there and representing Christ the way we ought to? Now is the time to do the commands of God. Hear now the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man, to go out and bear fruit. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a people called out from darkness to attain his marvelous light. Going is doing the commandments of God. Remember, God needs a witness and not a defender. Many a times you want to defend our doctrines, want to defend ourselves, why we don't do this, why we don't say that and do all those things. God is not looking for a defender. God is looking for a man, for a woman. God is looking for somebody that we witness. And that somebody is you, that somebody is me. Jesus is coming very soon. As Adventist men, as Adventists, believers in Christ, we must get up from our sleep of indifference and move. We must lift the banner high and move with the biddings of the Holy Spirit and evangelize and witness to everybody. And that assignment begins now. It is not an assignment of tomorrow. It is a now assignment. We must go out and share the good news with others. For how long are we going to stay comfortable in our comfort zones? As men, comfortable in our comfort zones as believers, not sharing the good news with others. It is enough us defending the doctrines that we know. There is no time for that. 
Because Christ is not looking for a defendant. He's looking for somebody to witness. We need to go out there and witness to our brothers, to our sisters. The spirit of God is calling. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Are you ready for the coming of Jesus? Be a witness and not a defendant. The great commission is upon us. All power has been given in heaven and on earth. Go and bear fruit. All power has been given. And you will receive power. You will receive dunatos, intrinsic power, intrinsic ability to perform, you will receive power to go out and witness to others. There's no time to waste brothers and sisters. We need to go out and spread the good news to everyone in the market, everyone who is our friend, our workmates, our family members, our neighbors, Everyone surrounding us must know that Jesus is Christ and he is coming back again. Shalom, my dear friends. May God bless you as you make it a deliberate cause, not to be a defendant, but a witness in the name of Jesus Christ. To go out there and witness to everybody showing everybody, telling everybody the good news that is in the word of God. For not until this good news, this everla everlasting gospel is preached to every nation, then the end shall come. Shall we pray, beloved? Our Father in God, in Jesus' name, Blessed be your name because you are God in heaven and in the earth. We want to thank you, Father, for your greatness because we without you, we are nothing. You have called us at this hour, us living a challenging times such as these, to spread the good news to everyone that is our neighbor. That means to everyone that is near us. We want to ask for power, Father. May you give us the power. The power that is your word, that is like fire in our bones, that we cannot shut up or sit down, but speak out and witness to a brother, to a sister. The world is looking for men, men who help another to see you, men who help others to be better Christians, men who will not fear to call sin by its right name. Want to pray, Heavenly Father, for these Adventist men in Crater SGA Church. May you breathe the Holy Spirit upon them, bless them all, that they may be energized to go out there and spread the good news. To everyone that is watching, that is listening on this platform, we pray, Lord, Heavenly Father, may you outpour the Holy Spirit to anyone who is available to use this power to go out there. Help us, Heavenly Father, to be greater witnesses. Just as Christ, our example, witnessed. May the blessings of today be upon us. In the name of Jesus, we ask and pray. 
May the believers in Christ believe and respond. Amen. God Amen. bless you. Amen. God Thank bless you, so you beloved. Meet you tomorrow with the subject. Set your priorities right. God bless and Amen. enjoy the evening. Asante Amen. sana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.